I mean, not only did it spawn off this this reputable franchise, one of the things that I was made to realize again, kind of considering all these games, is at one point just how absolutely exceptional Konami was as a publisher. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the thing they kind of take away, and you're like, oh, hello and welcome to level 96 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here once again with my two compadres. Of course, I have David. What up? And I have Corey. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are we feeling this fine evening? Sick. Exhausted. Yeah. yeah it's been a it's been a it's been a cold and, and mischievous winter. Yeah, it's been a long year. Yeah. It's been we uh if I recall, this is February second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, hopefully things get better. I found out. How are today, you, Jeremy? I'm doing not bad. Good. Doing fine. I did read earlier that uh Paul Sinex, or however the heck you pronounce that freaking groundhog's name, didn't see the shadow. That means early spring this year. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. 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 Looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we welcome into this level of the pod. Level 96, we are creeping ever so closer to the 100 level mark. And then from there, chaos, the world ends. We all slip into the void, yada, yada. Um, until then. Can't wait. Yeah, sounds fun. Until then, for today's level, we are continuing our Mount Rushmore series. And for this level, we are talking about another OG. The last one, we talked about the original Xbox how much we love the system, and it's great. This time, we're going to talk about the original PlayStation, so affectionately called the PS1. Actually, it's somewhat referred to the PSX, and then the PS1 was the smaller adaptation they did, the all-white one, which looked really cool. But it's the original PlayStation, okay? The one that Nintendo missed out on and probably should have did in hindsight, but they didn't. Um, yep. Yeah, how it goes. We got to pick four games that we believe represent this console. And um, the PlayStation 1 um, feels like out of all the game consoles, except for those maybe early, early 90s or early 81s, has aged the least gracefully. But we're mm -hmm. going to go back and visit some of these games that we believe represent it. So um, are we ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm curious as to how fast we want this to be. I believe this could literally be a 12-minute episode. It could be I a two-minute so. episode. Yeah. You don't think, don't so, think so, David? I don't think so. Because this has such a wide variety of games. And where it comes into this is a lot of games that were multi counseled a lot of people feel they are more so PlayStation games. Mm -hmm. There is that. It was just yeah. the bigger council at the time <laughs> there is a component of that um my feeling with the playstation one is it's like early cell phone early like android cell phones there's a lot of bloatware and there's really only 10 or 20 percent of actual essential apps and i believe that's the same for playstation i believe there's only 10 to 20 percent of these games that really are of quality and merit and free people to think about and the rest of it is just the dumpster fire of we're starting to do Ooh. 3D. Well, even I, uh, if you do that with 10%, we still have to find out the top, you know, I think, 4%. Hmm. I think, uh, like, looking through the catalog, there's actually a lot of really good games. You know, I'm not a huge yeah. PlayStation 1 guy, so I didn't play a lot of it. I didn't, I didn't realize how many good games there were. But uh, sticking with Jeremy here, there are just some so iconic mm -hmm of a game that you just that it has to make the it's so iconic so yeah. iconic it just it can't not make the mount rushmore so to me while there's a lot of good games and there would be a lot of good choices normally very very four stick out to me fourth one is a little iffy i could go a couple different ways but three of them are are absolutely no-brainers for me already yeah yeah so i mean if if someone else wants to offer a no-brainer, I can offer a no-brainer right now. I will I'm jump in. Okay. This, this one of these, one of these, absolutely has to be on this top four 
Mount Rushmore mm. for me to even mm. agree with you guys. Okay. 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 One, it needs to be Resident Evil 2 or Twisted Metal 2. Okay. Are you hold on? Are you are you putting out what I believe I believe is an ultimatum? Essentially. Because one, Resident Evils are still out today, still in progress of being made, have mm-hmm. been made remade, remastered over and over again. Twisted Metal, that might just be, you know, me being a huge Twisted Metal yes. fan, but it does have right. a show, so there is a huge following for this game. They were like, oh, let's just pick this random game from this random console and hope it does well. No, they knew that they had a fan base that it could go towards. Okay. And, but I, I feel like <laughs> Resident Evil 2 can get up there because it's bigger of the two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fair of you to say. I think Twisted Metal is definitely like a, a fan pick. Yes, it does have a show, but um, I, I, I don't know. It, it's a great game. It is a great game. And that's one of those games where I'm thinking, yes, it is good and could potentially make a list, but it's just not iconic enough. Not iconic enough compared to Jeremy. Do you want to? But Resident Evil 2 well, is a really, really, I, really good pick. I believe that Resident Evil 2 is iconic, but is it a PlayStation iconic? That's yeah, that's where I mean, it's, it's got it's, it's, it's gotta it go some it's gotta go somewhere. We can't keep saying like, oh, but it was on a different console. Like at exactly. one point. And that's why I brought that to... up in the very beginning. Exactly. Exactly. A lot yeah. of games were multi console but they feel like a PlayStation game. Right. So I'll okay, so that's on we're gonna figure we're gonna figure those out. Um, a no-brainer that I feel like we all don't even have to think about. This Grand game Turismo. is iconic. <laughs> Very nice guess. This game is iconic. This game was only on the PlayStation, okay? And it oh, is the, the one that way. everyone t- that everyone talks about to this day. Final Fantasy VII yep. is a no-brainer. Yep. It was fifty-fifty, yeah. and I guess the wrong one. Yeah, Final Fantasy it's VII is a hundred percent. That has to be out there. It's just yes. the same thing. Same yes. thing as Resident Evil Two. The, they're still being made today. They're iconic. You know, they, there's there's no way you don't put that on there. Yeah, some 100%. people don't even consider this the best Final Fantasy on the console, but mm-hmm. which is fine. I, which in terms of icon status, so it's one hundred percent the one that um square right. square left uh nintendo stuff you know, they didn't leave them they didn't like uh own them but they stopped working right. with them to go <laughs> exclusively to playstation and they put out just a huge huge hit that put jrpgs on the map when we talk about um when we had talked about hey when was the golden age, age of rpgs this was it this point yeah, in time this, right here when final fantasy 7 came out what when did it everybody was playing jrpgs mm-hmm. So Final Fantasy VII is, yes, the 100% definition of a no-brainer. Yeah. I agree. Oh, I mean, so the Mount Rush. Mount uh, Rushmore, it, 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 yeah, it's carved on there already. Yeah. When we when we picked the rock, Cloud's face was already on the rock. It was, <laughs> it was very weird. <laughs> right. Um, so I have two no-brainers. I'll stick with one, then we can kind of talk around until we get to the other one. And, oh, man. Okay, so so when you have a whole genre of game named after you i feel like that kind of makes you a no-brainer so influential to the hobby of gaming that it is one half of one of the most popular genres we're talking about metroidvanias here and i'm specifically talking about the vania part castlevania symphony of the night 2d action rpg when 3d was all the hotness 3d let's make everything 3d let's make everything super ugly let's make everything clunky Konami was like, listen, we have a good thing with Castlevania. We're going to keep it in the in the sprite-based medium, and we're going to put out one of the greatest games ever made. Um, spoilers for anyone that hasn't played the game, it also has one of the most iconic like twists in all of gaming, if you guys know mm-hmm. what that is, with the whole, yeah. um, I mean, I'll say it, the game's really old, but twisting of the castle. Like when you think you beat the game, it flips the castle over and you had to play through it again. Amazing. It did a lot for that genre of game where it was just kind of a, a side scrolling action game. This one really did make it more of like an action RPG where you're collecting the enemy souls and you get to use them as weapons and you get just different weapons attached to yourself. And it spawned, like I said, so many games on top of it and just took 
so much inspiration. David, you brought out the, hey, they made a Twist Metal show. That's great. They made they made multiple Castlevania shows at this point, and they're excellent. Like, it's 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 definitely iconic. They don't make the series anymore because Konami is Konami, but, like, Castlevania, to me, is no-brainer. A strong entry. That's a strong entry that... Um, it is. It... <sighs> It does. It does feel like a no-brainer. And, and I don't think I mentioned this. This this is usually up there on greatest games of all time. Hundred percent. Like when IGN does a top 100 games, when anyone does a top 100 games, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is usually in the top 10. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I feel I I have less familiar familiarity with actually playing the game but i am very familiar with the esteem and how much respect that game has um and like you said it kind of choosing to go against the the trend of we're going into 3d let's make everything let's try to see how we can transition everything to 3d and they said no we're going to continue with the 2d aspect of it and just make it the best it can be and like challenge so many conventions and turn a lot of ideas on its head um and it it paid for it man people are I can't remember that game. Was it um, Bloodstained or something like that? It yeah. was like a Kickstarter that came out a few years ago that was basically trying to be the spiritual successor of yeah. Symphony of the Night. And it didn't succeed at that because Symphony of the Night is just so great. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's I, I can't I can't really think of anything that I would that I would say, ah, especially. But this has to, you know, go before right. that as far as on the list. I didn't even know there was a Castlevania on PlayStation, and it's not even in the top hundred sold. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a, but it's it's a greatness. It's one of those ones where, hey, not everyone you know buys it, but it's exceptional. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. it's one of those kind of releases, and yeah, it is. Um, it is a PlayStation. Was it a solely PlayStation release? I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. um, I believe so. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how it doesn't get on there. It is, it is constantly talked about as one of the 10, 15, 20 best games in gaming. And, um, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, yeah, Symphony of the Night. So I'm, I'm willing to lock that in. We've got two here, which means we've got two left. Um, David, you've petitioned for... Let's just say, I, I think if I'm if I'm going off of what Corey's kind of putting out there, let's just say that Resident Evil Two is going to enter the consideration mm -hmm. as being on as being on the top four here. Um, let's 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 think about let's let's give it like a Phantom Four spot and let's discuss some other games and see where they go. Right, I I just think there's still a few, you know. Yeah. So um. Let's let's what's some other I, I got another one that I feel like is a no brainer. OK. Um, Metal Gear Solid. See, yeah, yeah. so it has to make it. This, see, it, I, told, it, I think this is harder lit. than we think it is harder. It has to make it. I know, yeah. but well, that's, I'm saying it's four. I that's know four. OK, but what about. <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It is the OG. Our generation still talks about it to this day. They remastered it. I think it's what really set off a chain of skateboarding games. You know, we have Skate 1, 2, and 3. Uh, there was like Extreme 2000 that was also on PlayStation. I don't remember the exact name of it. But like that blew up there's tony hawks two three and four and underground and whatever else they eventually got really bad well let's let's talk metal gear first real quick okay. and then we'll go on to tony hawk because yeah, you do definitely have a point and i've i've mentioned tony hawk throughout the series um mm -hmm. but yeah let's go back to metal gear uh jeremy do you have uh words you want to say about that game because i mean i mean not only did it spawn off this this reputable franchise. One of the things that I was made to realize again, kind of considering all these games is at one point, just how absolutely exceptional Konami was as a publisher. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the thing they kind of take away and you're like, Oh, um, but yeah, Metal Gear Solid <laughs> right. is, what happened? 
it's great in regards to its storytelling of espionage. Um, um, the character of Solid Snake is legendary. Uh, the way it kind of um, innovated on some of like the earlier games and how it, you know, as far as camera work and how it showed the action and how the player would engage with it compared to before. And um, yeah, just all the different types of missions and characters and the way it was pushing environmental and graphical design at that time on that system. Uh, Metal Gear Solid is just an absolute legend among games. Um, and the fact that PlayStation got it, I think that makes it that makes it one of the best. I mean, we have I have another game, another spy game on here that will not touch it. Siphon Filter, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, that, Siphon Filter, good, though. Siphon the Filter one, was at least. yeah, the Siphon Filter was okay. It was it, but it used Metal Gear Solid as a point of inspiration. So I mean, how can I how can I put that on there and not 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 to mention there's a bunch of games better than Siphon Filter, but how can I not put the inspiration of that game on there? And right. It's... No, Metal Gear is better for sure. Yeah. I I think when we look at something like Final Fantasy VII and Metal Gear is like it was almost like the Hollywood Hollywooding of like video games, like the first instance of like wow, this feels like a Hollywood production. This feels mm-hmm. like a like feels a really big movie. This feels like a movie. Like oh my yeah. god the the acting, the cutscenes, the the intricate story, like this is kind of nuts, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's kind of what Metal Gear brought, along with the uh, the excellent stealth gameplay. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. And like I said, the icon status of Metal Gear is literally cannot be denied. It is right, and like, it, like again, a lot of those espionage games later are that came later that are great are clearly inspired from it. We talked. We mentioned before Xbox and Splinter. And that's yeah, Splinter Cell, clearly inspired yes. by Metal Gear Solid. You know, it's one hundred percent. Yeah, you know, it, it's just it's the OG. So I'm okay with 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 chalking that one up as as in the mountain. Me too. It's Metal Gear Solid. Are you okay with that, David? Like, yeah. So that's three. Which. Like I now, said, I, that's that's the easy part. That's the to me that was the very easy part. There was the three, three were the were... easy one. Yeah. No, now, David, you had mentioned Tony Hawk. Yeah. So we have the Tony Hawk series. Mm-hmm. We have Resident Evil series. Mm-hmm. We have Spyro. We have mm, Crash not Bandicoot. Quite. Not quite. We have mm. uh, Gran Turismo. They're I mean, yes, but. Yes. Yeah. But, but like I think during okay. oh Gran Turismo was great. I also think around that time Ridge Racer was also pretty great and it was kind of there was more competition there. And I think it's the PlayStation 2 era where Gran Turismo really became the standard. I feel like I feel like Gran Turismo is like right up there with icon status where like Yeah. That might have been one of the very early games where people just bought a console just for that game. You know, it was Car Guys. Car Guys were like, hey, we find like this is the only game we're going to play mm-hmm. and we'll buy every one. But, like it's a racing game. So, like, get the F out of here. It I mean, it was only the you know, most sold game on PlayStation. I, I, listen, it, it yeah. probably deserves to be on the list. All right. It's a racing <laughs> game. I mean, get the F out of here. All right. We ain't putting no okay. racing racing boys up on here. Okay. We can't we can't afford it. Did you hear the top three? Do you understand what's being fought for in the fourth? We can't afford the Gran Turismo. What about so here's, Odd World? No, it's not no. quite there. No, uh okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was Dino just gonna crisis. say I'm, so here's the deal. I, I understand all these are very respectable franchises. At this point, you're really just arguing with your pick. We have Resident mm-hmm. Evil in, in the four spot right now, like trying mm-hmm. to fight off these other contenders. And like Oddworld doesn't even come close. Spyro, Crash, while very successful and good franchises, they don't, they don't, they're not iconic enough. You know, I think I think there is one other franchise that there debuted is. here. <laughs> there is. Uh, are we talking Tomb Raider. We are. Yes. Well, it did say Tomb Raider, right? You did not. As far okay, as I well, remember. I meant to. <laughs> okay. Well, that was right. another one I was going to mention. Yes. Tomb Raider, I think, could definitely slot into four. No arguments from anyone. Mm-hmm. It would be fine. Everyone would understand. I think the original Tomb Raider is not that good. Mm, Especially, yeah. I, I, I remember playing it when it came out. Yeah. And it had the Resident Evil movement, 
you know, where you had to like turn and then walk forward. Mm-hmm. Except instead of being survival horror, it was like a puzzle platformer. Yeah. Which, man, the platforming was pretty rough. I guess maybe if you and got you, really used to it. Yeah. And you sometimes sh- shot tigers and bears. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not a huge fan. Can't deny Lara Croft and what that franchise has done. So, yeah. but you can deny her, especially if you got Resident Evil 2. We can. There. Yeah, we can. I don't think, I mean, people say, oh, Tomb Raider. I don't think Tomb Raider 1 really, if you stacked it up against a Resident Evil 2, I mean, are you really going to say that this was a superior gaming experience? I mean, there's there's some things that Tomb Raider did that was really interesting, but I mean, you're going to put it up against Resident Evil 2? I mean, I don't... I could see it. I could see it there. I mean, uh, we've we mentioned before, like, well, does Crash Bandicoot belong there? I don't think maybe the first or second one. I definitely think Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped deserves a mention there. Because um, that was the best of the original trilogy. I um, was going to say, it, number three came out on top between the originals. Yeah, that was the best. I mean, I remember that being the best one. And so, I think more people remember the first one. But the third one was the best one. But, I mean, I don't I don't know. Here's, a, here's another. I don't know if the game is better. But we're talking about PlayStation. A part of that is how it represents the console. Does our top, does our Mount Rushmore of PlayStation games not include Parappa the Rapper? <laughs> no, I can't. Dang it. That was another one I wanted to mention. I, I love that game. Can. That was such a good game. I oh my, It's one of the first games I beat. Yeah, I don't think it can. Um, looking at the catalog, we have, a, is this the first Medal of Honor? No, I don't think so. Medal of Honor Underground, I guess it wouldn't be, but uh, no, um, there were there were there were PC releases before. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Siphon Filter or something like Soul Reaver, I know is highly beloved. Now, when we get to PlayStation 2, Medal of Honor Frontline, I'm gonna have mm. some stuff to say about that. Okay, okay. But um I mean how I mean the, the more the more we're going through this list it seems the more that resident evil two kind of maybe gets that fourth spot. Now, is there a reason a ris- original resident evil came out on here, right? Yeah. Really? But... Resident evil's really good. Uh, it's not resident yeah. Evil two though. I mean, it, it's not, but it's the iconic mansion. Uh, yeah, you know, mansion, I, I would but... say it's kind of like the first, mainstream horror game that like probably blew up and was yeah. amazing and got people into survival horror. Um, definitely iconic characters. I, I don't know. I just, I, I know Resident Evil 2 is looked at as a better game. Yeah. I mean, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 is the police station, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a police station. And you fire up, you get up off the ground in front of a flaming pile of cars and immediately get attacked, swarmed by zombies. I mean, it, <laughs> It's 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 yeah, iconic. Resident Evil Two sold about seven hundred thousand more than the original Resident Evil. I mean, either one could go up there. I just feel like the Resident Evil series should be on here. That was that was my original four. So when I came in here saying, "Hey, I had four Resident Evil. Either one or two was the fourth one that I thought was a pretty easy pick." Um, like I said, man, Tony Hawk feels like it should go somewhere, but it just really, really if hasn't it's, yet. If, it's in a, if it hasn't, I mean, we've pretty much done every other gen, uh, every other console this gen. So if it's not going on PlayStation, it's not going on anything. Yeah, right. I think unfortunately for it, just extreme sports games are just kind of like not as prestigious. Yeah, even you know, if, like, even the best of its even the best of its kind. Right. I mean, a console. Every council we've done has had just monster hits that don't have room for a game like that. Um, it's a great game to have on your council. You definitely would love to play it, would love to have it in your collection. But when looking at the top four, I think something like Resident Evil 2 does fit a lot better. And and it's a great yeah. game. It's an excellent game. So um, I have no problem with that one. If I could just give a small little shout out, Final Fantasy Tactics was... Was, I never played it on this console. I played it on the PSP. But man, that's such a it's such a great game. Such a great game. I mean, I'd like to give I a shout a... out to Bushido Blade. Okay, Hours you did. Of fun with it. Hours of fun with it. 
I think shout out to Rich Racer. Hours of fun with it. What was, <laughs> hours. was that on the GameCube? Which one? Well, Final Fantasy was on the GameCube, the tactics. Uh no. No, uh Final Fantasy shoot. It was like shard something, I think. Yeah. Shard yeah. Tactics? I don't know. It wasn't tactics. It was a multiplayer game that you could use the Game Boy Advance as a controller and play four players. I that I don't know. One person, uh, Crystal Chronicles. That was yep. one on the GameCube. Yep, yeah, that one was One person, it. one person had to hold the crystal and carry it along. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, fun times, fun times. Uh, yeah, shout out to Ape Escape, the yeah. most confusing game I've ever played back in the day. Odd World I, for me. I, shout out to that. On the demo disc. Come to find out, oh. you needed a. You needed the PlayStation with the analog sticks, which I didn't have. No. So I remember playing the demo disc of Ape Escape and being like, I don't know what to do. This game is way too confusing for what me. What about, just, I know yeah. I know that we're done, but Devil May Cry. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those were good. Those, I, I think, I mean, it's never going to make it for PlayStation 2, but yeah. I feel like whichever one was on PlayStation 2 was probably looked at as like a greatest action game of all time yeah freaking frogger we got something like tekken tekken's making a lot of these lists tekken is tekken is is, tekken was really good it was really good um but then again it could be kind of like a thing of i don't know the whole fighting games have like ebbs and flows in regards to like prestige generational prestige yeah yeah no, no no hate against tekken 3 but um, as a as a middle aged gamer, you know, like living through pretty much the entirety of gaming's history, at, you know, after the Nintendo, I just mm, I don't right. I don't I don't remember Tekken three popping off, you know, like Mortal Kombat, any of the Tekkens, like Mortal it's just, Kombat it's just there. didn't make didn't make our list, and that definitely had a pop off point where it was everywhere and everyone was talking about it and it made the news. And it's like, well, Mortal Kombat couldn't make our list. Wait, so, Mortal should, Kombat that, didn't that make your Sega, Sega Genesis. It didn't make it. No? I know. I'm just saying. I know. Oh. Oh, I'm I'm very surprised. But uh, Silent Hill, props to that yeah. one. Yeah. I like. I'm very surprised. PlayStation One had top tier talent that I did not realize. Yeah. yeah. That's why also, I thought it was going to be harder than it. That's it turned out to be. But we also but, just named all of them. That's true. I mean, how, I mean, how many more are we forgetting? Maybe ten to twelve other games, and then the uh, drop the possibly. drop off is steep. I'm telling you, it is a steep drop off. I mean, GTA started on here, didn't it? Yeah, the first mm. one was it? No, that's the first one, right? The first one was uh, started on Dreamcast, didn't it? Oh, okay. I just see Grand Theft Auto Two here. Also, came out in those 99. also those earlier ones sucked. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, they weren't that they weren't that good. Just like I don't know, maybe we're maybe people are being maybe we're revealing it to people that yeah, the first Tomb Raider, not that good. Um, it was okay. It was pretty decent over its time, but it's not great. It's kind of like uh is it, it suffers GoldenEye syndrome, I believe, in a in a lot of ways. Hmm. Well, they just remade the three, the original three, or remastered them and put them out. So if you want to try it for yourself, you can yeah. definitely right. spend too much and, money on those three games. And remember last year they did a re-release of Goldeneye. So if you want to go and see what a very terribly overrated shooter from the 90s looks and feels like, that also kind of at one point still didn't work in 2023. You can go ahead and check that out there. <laughs> but we're talking about PlayStation, so I think we have our Mount Rushmore etched in yeah. stone, which yeah. is Final Fantasy VII, mm-hmm. yeah. Resident Evil 2. Mm-hmm. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. That is a stacked lineup. That is, I feel like you could put that four against any of the four that we've done. I really do. I feel like this is one of the strongest foursomes that we have. Yeah, yeah, hundred like percent. And I think, yeah. I think with the exception of Resident Evil Two, the other three are console exclusives. So I know with with some other ones they may there may have been like well this feels more like a this compared to that and there may have been one or two that had multiple multi plat releases at the time that kind of made the top four this one three of the four you can only get on PlayStation 
right? Right. And the Resident so, Evil did at, start at, at the time on PlayStation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, at um, the time, because like all these have been ported, ported right. to everything, <laughs> everything. <laughs> right. 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 Honestly, right. you. I think you can play all, all four. Well, at least the first three games, like in that kind of state, on new consoles today. Mm-hmm. Like Symphony of the Night, you can play on PlayStation very easily. Metal Gear One, they just came back out with a a remastered look at it. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven, you can still play on PC, mobile, place yeah. like it's. You can play all these games exactly as they were back then mm-hmm. today. Yeah. <laughs> and Resident Evil 2 has a has a amazing remake. Yeah. It does. Um yeah. All right. You kind of zip through this PlayStation one. As I thought, it would be pretty quick because again, a lot of vaporware once you get past like 50 or six, like 40 or 50 games. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of games. Uh, and the, I mean, there is a lot of sequels and stuff that just make it look like there's a lot more games well i mean yeah i mean so like you said we mentioned crash like could all three crashes be talked about yeah but there's one best one and that's the one we talk about so i think right jeremy jeremy a little bit of a hater right here i don't think so i don't think so i think that i mean most games are kind of that way but i think it's just less for the playstation you know you can maybe you can maybe name 100 good xbox games right PlayStation 2 would probably be the most because it has the largest library. Right. Yeah. You know, and PlayStation 1 probably has the You know what? You know who probably has the least? It's probably the Dreamcast because the Dreamcast only had 100 games come out for it before, before it got canned. Oh, okay? I, would assume, I would assume N64. <laughs> yeah, N64 pretty bad. Yeah, Not a lot before, of games either. Yeah, it only had like 200. Like 232 yeah. or something. Yeah. I remember seeing some guy trying to beat every single one. Yeah, so for sure, but uh, I never really owned a PlayStation one that much. You know, I think I had one from time to time, but never like in the prime. So it's cool to kind of see it. Did I miss out? I don't know. It feels like it a little bit, but I don't think you did. That's a PlayStation owner. I don't think you did. Okay. I just mostly play Madden on it. I don't think you did. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, I guess we're towards we're near the end of the the podcast level, which leads us to final thoughts. We can make a final thought about anything that's related or unrelated to this podcast level episode. So, who would like to give a final thought first? I can offer one. Me. Okay. Okay. You go ahead, David. Okay. So, ever since about sixth grade, I've been using the screen name Blind Rapper 1179. Now, the Blind Rapper part comes from the Blind Skateboard Company. You know, their mascot is a blind reaper. But the 1179 comes from a PlayStation game called Felony oh. 1179. Interesting. I shout out that game. That's pretty it cool, was man. Total crap. <laughs> it was like the first rendition of Grand Theft Auto. Oh, I can never get past the first level. You steal this statue, and you're being chased by the police in a car. So it's like Darren Theft Auto-esque, just not open mm-hmm. world. And for some reason, 1179 just stuck with me, so I put it on every single screen name I have. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> so shout out to that. Nice and Parasite thing. Eve, because we forgot to mention that. Okay. Nice, a nice little bit of uh, David Lore building happening there. I like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Uh, I'll go next year. I mean, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're in Michigan. Jolly Bee just opened up around here. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys have seen that. Have you guys tried it? I have not tried it. I don't eat fast food. Uh, me and the wife tried it the other week. Uh, it was okay. I got. I, it's a chicken place, but it, it serves a few other things. You know, they have their Jolly Bee burger, and I thought the burger was pretty disgusting. But the chicken was like very tasty and, and very unique flavor, very mm. unique flavor for chicken that I liked. So uh, well, they yeah, need that. Jolly, Jolly, uh, Jolly Bee is located from or based in the Philippines. Am I correct? That's right. That's yeah, right. Like I that, think yeah. it's. I think it's. I don't want to speak out a lot here. But I think it's like a pretty good source of pride. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I saw. I saw people like because I didn't go when it first opened. I, it was no. Like, that was like an hour long now. line. It was yeah, I, trailing. I saw people getting out of their cars and taking pictures when me and my wife were there of the mm-hmm. location, you know? So yeah. I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. 
That's cool. I'm going to try it out. Um, my final thought is that WB game sucks. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League just came out. And there ended up being a bunch of issues. One that like auto completes a quest line or maybe the entire campaign. <laughs> it completed they had to, the campaign if you want to And they take it off an hour after it went live on servers. WB Games, for you guys that don't know, they also published the Arkham series, which those were good until they until the last one had a bunch of technical issues. They published all the uh the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War games, which had a bunch of middling stuff and and i mean they're good games but they had a lot of weird microtransaction approaches warner brothers games kind of blows so um just want to make that known i think everyone might know that or might not because they keep buying their games we do um know. yeah the warner brothers wb games not good that's my final thought yeah that leads us to the end of level 96 of the thoughts and players podcast if you like what you heard Please follow us on the socials. Um, you know, links are everywhere. We're on we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Um, you can also catch episodes of the podcast on your preferred podcast service, like Apple or Overcast or Google or Spotify. Um, or you can catch us on YouTube at Thoughts Players, where we upload video versions of the podcast levels, same time as the regular audio ones go out. If you want to support us, there's two ways you can do so. Um, you can buy merch from the merch store. We have a spring store. You can check out stuff there. T-shirts, cups, stickers, all that type of stuff. Um, and then we also have a Patreon. Three different tiers, two, five, seven dollars. You can check it out where we offer a bunch of goodies and uh, extra perks. Uh, that is it for me, though. Fellas, is there anything else you would like to add? Please. All right. Thanks for tuning in. And we will catch you on the next level.